everyone in this video we're going to be solving a polynomial equation with sixth powers so is that going to be a hexic equation or maybe a hectic equation let's go ahead and find out or something else we have x plus one to the sixth power and x minus one to the sixth power and then I, i'm supposed to solve for x now since we have the same power on both sides you're probably thinking what i'm thinking why don't we just eliminate the powers? Whatever that operation is, right? Just rooting, whatever. So this gives us something beautiful. x plus 1 equals x minus 1. And then you cancel the x's out. Don't cancel the 1's out. But you do, like, damn if you do, you damn if you don't. 1 equals negative 1 makes no sense at all, right? Hopefully. So that means there are no solutions. Nonsense. 1 does not equal negative 1. At least in the real world, in the general sense of real numbers, right? In certain worlds, different worlds, it can be true, like modular arithmetic. By the way, I made a video on modular arithmetic. Go ahead and check it out. Let me know what you think. Now, this didn't work well, did it? So we need to try something else. Where does the problem? First of all, think about it. Why did we have an issue when we just canceled? Doesn't this normally work? Well, it does and it doesn't. So... It depends. Don't you hate it when somebody says, like, when you ask a question, it depends, right? So, let's go and look at it from another perspective, the binomial theorem. Do you know the, the sixth row of Pascal's triangle? What does that mean? It means the binomial coefficient. Six choose zero. Six choose one. Six choose two. Six choose three. Six choose four. By the way, when you get to six choose three, you're in the middle, and then six choose two and six choose four are the same, and six choose five and six choose one are the same, and six choose six and six choose zero are the same. Because it's combinations, guys. In how many ways can you choose two objects from a group of six? It's the same thing as choosing four, because by choosing two, you're not choosing the other four, which means you're choosing them. You're choosing not to choose them, in other words, okay? Kind of like an interesting scenario. I don't do a lot of combinatorics videos, but at least I can talk about this a little bit, you know. Anyways, so those are the coefficients. And if you expand it, like, for example, this is going to be a 1. This is going to be a 6. And then 6 choose 2 is basically 6 times 5 divided by 2, which is 15. And then 6 choose 3 is 6, 5, 4 divided by 3, 2, 1. But this is the same as 6, so it's going to be 20. And then you're going to go back to 15, and then 6, and then 1. Symmetry, right? Beautiful symmetry. So if you expand x plus 1 to the 6th power, you're going to get something like this then right? x to the 6th power plus 6x to the 5th. By the way, in binomial theorem, you're also supposed to multiply by the powers of the second term, but since the term is 1 in this case, and it's negative 1, we don't have to worry about it. You can just ignore 1 because one, powers of 1 will be 1 anyways. So then you're just going to proceed. Everything is positive. Everything is a plus sign. Just reduce the power of x as you go, and you'll be good. And you know that when you reach half of 6, you are in the middle. Okay, and then everything will be reversed and the powers will add up to six, so on and so forth. This is fairly easy to do. And then once you get the hang of it, you're going to really enjoy it, hopefully. Now, I want this to equal something like this. But what's going to happen is with the introduction of negative one, every other term is going to alternate like it's x to the six because negative one. I got to think about it. Negative 1 to the power 0 is 1. At the end, we're going to get negative 1 to the 6th power, which is also going to be a positive. So I have a positive sign here. Let me write that. So this is supposed to be a negative. Negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. You can just say that, okay, 1 negative, 1 positive, okay? It's, that's how it goes. And this should always work. Okay, we can do it both sides so that we know we're doing the right thing. Now, I want these two things to be equal, right? That's what my equation tells me. But we kind of arrived at something that doesn't make sense. But does this make sense? Well, first of all, this is not a hexic equation. Uh, I'm glad that it's not even hexic or hectic. Now, it's actually going to be quintic. But no luck because there is no quintic formula. I repeat, there is no quintic formula. Some people claim there is, but there isn't. Too bad. Sorry to burst your bubble. X to the 6 cancels out, and we can go ahead and actually put everything on the left-hand side. Oh, there's other things. Sorry about that. These two cancels out, 
and then these two cancel out and the ones cancel out because they are on different sides, right? And now we're going to go ahead and bring everything with an odd power, which means that these are all going to be doubled. You see what I'm talking about? So we're going to have 12x to the fifth and then plus 40x to the third and then plus 12x equals zero. Uh-oh, this is the best quintic. Not the best one, best one, but it's pretty good. Now look at this. We have a common factor, don't we? Well, looks like we can factor out f4. Is there anything larger? No, I don't think so. We can factor out 4x. Good. Okay, let's factor out 4x. We're going to get 3x to the fourth power plus 10x squared. I'm not good at factoring, I guess. Plus 3 equals 0. Wow. Isn't that crazy? Yes, we can solve it, even though that's quartic. It's kind of like a bi... Is it called bi-quadratic? I think so. Because you only have even powers. So... From here, obviously, x equals 0 happens to be a solution. And guess what? We can go back and check it because if you replace x with 0, you're going to realize, uh-oh, surprise, 1 to the 6th power is the same as negative 1 to the 6th power because they're both 1, right? Good, good. We got one solution at least, right? And we can find more solutions from here. How? Well, we can go ahead and set x squared equal to y. And don't ask why. You're going to get 3y squared plus 10y plus 3 equals 0. And by the aid of quadratic formula, negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Divided by 2a, which is 6. Okay, let's see what this is going to turn into. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 times 3 is 36. 100 minus 36. Hmm. That looks like 64 to me which square root, whose square root is 8. So it's going to be negative 10 plus minus 8 over 6. And then we can split it up, negative 10 plus 8 over 6, negative 8 minus 10 over 6. This is negative 2 over 6, which is negative 1 third. And this is negative 18 over 6, which is negative 3. Wow. I could actually find the solutions by factoring, but I didn't want to try it because the x method is boring or kind of too long not boring it's interesting but i think it's kind of too much work well this is too much work too but anyways we could solve it but we have to go back and back substitute what is y y is x squared beautiful well y is equal to negative one third which is equal to x squared uh oh houston we have two problems we got negative squares <laughs> okay so what does that mean the solutions are not real. Too bad, right? We got two solutions from here. And so how do you write them? By taking square roots, one of them is going to be like square root of one third i with the plus minus sign. You can also write it minus one over three times the square root of i. I mean, square root of one third multiplied by i. And from here, you get x equals root three times i or negative root three times i. You could, again, write with... Uh, plus minus sign. So did we not get any real solutions? Yeah, the only real solution is x equals zero. Great. Well, this channel doesn't deal with complex numbers most of the time, but they just come up sometimes. Why? Because I have another channel, a plus b. I Did I tell you that before? I don't know. I probably tell you in every video. Go ahead and watch the videos, guys. Comment, like, and let me know what you think. And ask questions. If you're new to complex numbers, check out the lecture videos as well. So, we only got one real solution, and this is a quintic, so that's perfectly normal. But with odd-numbered polynomial equations, you always get at least one real solution, which is the good part. They have to intersect the x-axis, right? There's no other way. They can twist and turn, twist and turn. They have to intersect the x-axis. That's a must, okay? Even numbers don't have to do that, or even powers. So... Is there an alternative to this method? Absolutely. So you don't have to deal with what's it called? The binomial theorem, right? First of all, let's discuss why our very initial method approach did not work. Because we assume that we could just take the square roots and assume that both sides are going to be positive. But that just means that you're assuming x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 0 and x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. 
Well, this means x needs to be greater than or equal to negative 1, and x needs to be greater than or equal to 1. But when that happens, think about it, both have to happen, right, at the same time. That just means that you're basically saying that your x values are going to be uh, greater than this, right? No, the intersection. So this, okay. This is the intersection, not that one. You get the idea? Okay, so on this interval, we don't have a solution. Okay, anyways, whatever that means. So here's what I'm going to do next. We can flip this. We could look at it this way too, right? So x minus 1 to the 6th power is the same as 1 minus x to the 6th power. From here, if you write x plus 1 equals 1 minus x, you get 2x equals 0 and x equals 0 as the only real solution. Why are the other solutions not real? Why are they complex? Let's go ahead and talk about it briefly because this question is more appropriate for a plus bi, but I'm going to give you a clue as to how you can approach this problem. First of all, divide both sides by this. Okay. And then... This is going to be 1, of course. Of course, x cannot be 1, and we know that it's not a solution, so on and so forth. So this is all good. Now, go ahead and uh, put these like that with a common power, and now you have 1 on the right-hand side. Now, in the real world, this only has 2 square roots or 6 roots. So in other words, there are two numbers whose 6 power equals 1, 1 and negative 1. I shouldn't say roots, right? But in the complex world, a number has 6 sixth roots. You're talking about roots of unity. So write this as e to the power 2 pi n i. Again, that's an a plus b, I think, but you can go ahead and check it out. And then n is an integer 0 through 5. Go through these iterations. Take the sixth root of both sides. That gives you the following, e to the power 2 pi n i to the power 1 over 6, which gives you e to the power pi n i over 3, and from here, you can find these values, and then from there, you can find the x values. If you want to go ahead and cross-multiply and find x values in terms of this monstrosity here, you can do that as well. But I'm going to leave it at this point because we already got all the solutions, including the complex ones, and you should get the exact same ones, but in a much more elegant way because complex numbers are beautiful, and Euler gave us beautiful formulas, beautiful identities, and he basically founded the most beautiful equation in math. You know what it is? Maybe later on I'm going to make a video about it. Because this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. Don't forget to check out A plus BI and Shorts channel as well. And bye-bye.